So we go from four effective pairs, and now how about if the central atom, and it's always the central atom that we put the shape around, if the central atom has three effective pairs, well, how do you get that? Okay, well remember, multiple bonds can count as one, or there can be exceptions, so watch this. That's called trigonal or uh, trigonal planar shape. I don't care how you pronounce it, I usually say trigonal, trigonal planar. Uh, trigonal, that's fine, whatever you want to say. Uh, three effective pairs. Okay, now here's the thing. BF3. Now look, boron is in group 3 and it's a non-metal and there's fluorine in group 7. 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 is 24. Now here's the deal. Boron, I didn't tell you before, but boron is an exception to the octet rule just like hydrogen is because boron only needs to have 6. So it's a group 3, it, can only, it, it only needs 6. It can actually complete an octet but doesn't have to. And I'll show you why. Because now, BF3 is a stable compound. How are you going to make that? Boron in the middle, three fluorines around it. And, got to have 24. And if you put your lone pairs around every one of these fluorines, you are going to get 24 right there. And then that's it. You don't need the extra two on top. You don't need to put it in a multiple bond. Boron is an exception. It can complete a hextet, I guess. And so, that's fine for boron. Um, because, by the way, and, and this is why, right? What's, what's boron in? Group 3, right? And if it's got three bonds, what's its formal charge? Well, group 3 minus 1, 2, 3 equals 0. And there's your formal charge of zeros. That's why boron likes to be the way it is with that exception to the octet rule. Hmm. Now, what's the shape? Well, it doesn't lie flat like that and have 90 degree bond angles. But then again, it can lie flat. So what's it going to do? It's actually going to put the fluorines as far away from each other as possible. Now, in a circle, right? So what would be the bond angle here? Well, 120 degrees, because it's a 360 circle uh, with three points in it. So every one of the fluorines is going to be... Now, this is how you would draw the shape. Yeah, no kidding. All you have to do is draw the Fs at a bond angle of 180 degrees from each other. And that is called trigonal planar. Why? Because lies flat, right? It's flat, so it's planar. Trigonal, trigonal, because it's got three in the plane. Three in the plane on the outsides of the, uh, on the outskirts of the plane, right, with the central atom in the middle, gives you that trigonal planar shape. Well, that's cool. Now, there's another one of these too. Well, there's lots more of these, of course, but here's one that involves not an exception, but something that you just got to try to be able to put together like C2H4. Now that's actually a molecule called ethene when we get to the organic chemistry unit, and it's called an unsaturated aliphatic. Woo. But here's the point. That molecule right there, when you do the Lewis diagram, 2 times group 4 is 8, plus 4 is 12. C. C. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are the H's. So where, what are you going to do here? You're going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, Ah, 12, and now the octets are complete for the carbons. Perfect. It's got a double bond. Okay, how do you draw that? Or what is the three-dimensional shape of that? Well, these don't want to be that close to each other. They want to get away from each other. And when you turn that molecule, no kidding, what you're going to get is this in three dimensions. Okay, how would you actually build that with a molecular model kit? Because if you've got sticks that are actually between the carbons, how do you make two sticks go between them? Sometimes you don't have sticks. Sometimes you got the springs. So now look, it's beautiful. There's two C's, there's four H's here. Yeah, yeah, look at that. So what you've got here is this. Here's that molecule of ethene right there, C2H4. And you've got a double bond between the carbons. And look at the way that this is constructed. With that double bond in here, it actually makes it sit flat. That's planar. Now look, how many central atoms are here? Well, usually, so far, we've always just had one. But now there's really two in the middle. So just look at the shape around one of them. So we're going to look at this one right here. Don't look at these two hydrogens here. Just look at this carbon attached to this one in the center and these two hydrogens, okay? And watch this, and now, does this make sense to you? The rule is count multiple bonds, multiple bonds as one effective pair. 
this carbon right here, which we're going to call the central one here, has one effective pair. That double bond is one, two, three. One, two, three. Three effective pairs around that means trigonal planar shape. Cool, hey? And by the way, that one also has a trigonal planar shape around it. So there's two central atoms, both trigonal planar. So what do you call it? You could call it bi-trigonal planar or di-trigonal planar. I don't know. But there's two trigonal planars, and that's good enough to know. Okay. And then, if, and this one is kind of interesting, I think, it's a little, little different. If I said, draw the Lewis diagram for NO2 negative. Well, okay, NO2 negative. So that's, that's 6 times 2, which is 12, plus 5 is 17, plus one more electron, right? That's 18. So when you do that, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Sounds right, right? Um, um, well, no, that doesn't have a long... That doesn't have its octet complete, and nitrogen at least has to complete an octet. So now you get that, you put your brackets around it with a negative one charge, and that is the way that you draw the nitrite ion. Now look at this, look at this. How many effective pairs around this nitrogen? One effective pair, two effective pairs. What do you count a multiple bond as? One effective pair, that's three. So one, two, three. That means then that when you draw this, it looks like this you've got a trigonal planar shape. So you've got N bonded to a double bonded to an O, single bonded to an O, and you know that there's going to be resonance there, right? But there's a lone pair on top. But you don't count the lone pair in the name of the shape. So a trigonal planar arrangement is what we have, right? But that's not always the name of the shape. Sometimes you're going to get, well, what's that look like? Well, it's bent. So there's a bent shape in here, just like there was when there was a four effective pair one that had a bent shape. A three effective pair one, a trigonal planar arrangement, can also have a bent shape. That's cool.